Uh, so this week, uh, I want to talk about, uh, well, we've been talking about value this whole day today. Um, you know, we've been talking about AT&T, we've been talking about all sorts of value companies. And, and that's really what I'm known for here at Tackle Trading. I'm that guy. Um, you know, it, it has a lot to do with dividends and all that stuff. But today I want to talk about PE ratios. This is something that's near and dear to Matt. It's near and dear to myself. A lot of it's, I would say this is the most popular metric uh, for investors and traders out there uh, who want to start looking at the value of companies. Really, you know, you can look at the stability of a company, you can look at the, the, the metrics as, a, as, a, as how it operates, things like that. But when you really want to start breaking down, is it good value to buy a company? This is where you really start. So if I just go back just a little bit to last week, we talked about EPS last week, earnings per share last week. Earnings per share is a profitability measure. That's what that's what it's that's what it's there for. You know, you can see the the earnings per share here on AT and T. You know, these little numbers here. It's basically uh, the start of looking at profitability. Okay, so profitability is great. That's what we want. We're looking for those corporate companies that 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 create profits. You know, usually on a consistent basis. If you're looking for more an investment as opposed to a trade, you know. So when you start looking at that, EPS is where you start. But where you where you you know, graduate to is okay. I know how much money they make now. What do I got to pay to get a portion of that money? And so I'm going to go to my friend uh, Warren Buffett for a second here. And, and a quote from him is price is what you pay and value is what you get. And for me, price to earnings ratios is exactly what that is. We're going to, we're going to pay a price to be an owner of a company and we're going to get some value out of that and that value starts with earnings so we're going to get a portion of that earnings so if you think about it you know one dollar of earnings you know how much how much do we have to pay what's our pe ratio so as matt said uh you know uh the pe ratio for for at&t here was 187 right well we look at a, a, a nearest competitor here verizon verizon has a pe ratio of 9.5 right? Or 8.5, I think it might even be. Okay. So that's, those are two very different things. So when we start to look at PE ratio, we're, we're talking about, we're talking about determining value here. Is something overvalued? Is it undervalued? And it's not the only metric. Matt also spoke about, you know, you look at how much dividend they're paying and things like that, but, but it is kind of where you start to have this discussion about fundamentals. Okay. And so when we start thinking about price to, to earnings, you know, we're, we're just trying to, we're just trying to figure out is something fair priced or, or, or overpriced really? That's, I guess that's the best way I like to look at it. You know, if I want to buy a, a you know, a, a measure of earnings, if I want to buy $1 of earnings, how much do I got to pay for? It's going to be a multiple of that, right? It's going to be some measure of that. As we talked about with Verizon and, and AT&T here, you know, I got to pay 187 for $1 of, of earnings in, in AT&T, or I got to pay nine, $9.50 for $1 of earnings in Verizon. So if we just looked at those metrics, I think it's pretty easy to see, you know, where some value might be. But it's not necessarily the only thing that we look at. So we got to think about, you know, a high PE ratio is not the end all be all of a stock. OK, a high PE ratio is something that we look at. But what if it's uh, what if it's a company that hasn't shown any earnings yet? What if it's a company that, uh, you know, if it doesn't have any, uh, if it's got negative earnings, well, if you try to do a PE ratio, which is a PE ratio is just basically the price of the stock divided by the earnings per share. You know, well, what if you've got your earnings per share are zero or negative? Well, that doesn't really give you a ratio. So a high PE doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, take us out of out of you know uh, ownership in that stock. But it is a measure that we look at. Okay, something we got to look at. Now, if we've got these things where we don't have earnings per share or we have negative, we can still look at the trend of those. And this is what I spoke about last week: is we can look at the trend of the earnings to see how they're making out. You know, is the earnings consistently you know going up, or or is is the negative earnings consistently getting lower, this can be start of a growth conversation there. Okay, so that's one of the things. But back to the PE here, the, the reason we use PE ratio, and there's really, there's probably like three real, real reasons we, we look at the PE ratio. Number one is we're trying to compare two companies, right? You know, I've given you the T, the, the, the AT&T versus the Verizon kind of, you know, initial thing here. You know, I've been using Coca-Cola and Pepsi recently. You know, let's look at Coca-Cola and Pepsi. So KO, it's a $58 stock, $59 stock. 
Well, Pepsi's a hundred and some odd dollars, uh, 172. If you just looked at price, okay, you just looked at price, you'd be like, wow, that's a lot of money for Pepsi versus Coca-Cola. Okay, now you could start to talk about dividends and all the other stuff, but just looking at that alone doesn't tell us what we need to know. But if we start to go and we start to look at uh, the fundamental ratios like PE ratios, okay, if I pull up the Coca-Cola company on Finviz here, their PE ratio is about 28.57. So what that means is I got to pay $28.57 to get uh, $1 of earnings from Coca-Cola. Well, let's 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 line that up against Pepsi here. So we look at Pepsi here and we see, okay, well, they're about 28.60. So they're almost identical, right? So could we say that they're fair value? Well, we could say that they're they're close in comparison to, to each other, but what about when we start comparing them to an industry or we can start comparing them to the overall market? OK, that's another important thing. So we see a P.E. ratio of, of, of 2860 here. Is that overvalued compared to the market? Well, if we go to the what's called the Schiller P.E. ratio, and I know Matt's brought this up before. If we look at the Schiller P.E. ratio here, it gives you kind of an overall uh, ratio for the market itself. OK, well, the overall P.E. ratio right now is about thirty nine point four six. So if we compare those two stocks to the overall market, it seems that they're a little bit undervalued. Well, that might not be the exact apples to apples comparison, but it is something important to look at, because what you'll what you'll sometimes find is, you know, the higher the P.E. ratio of the market, the higher the P.E. ratio of the stocks as well, because they may be inflated in price. OK, now there's one more step we can take. Basically, we can compare the stock itself to the industry or the the uh, you know the the overall sector. So we go to consumer defensive here, and this is where it falls. This is where uh, Coke and Pepsi fall into beverages, non-alcoholic here. Okay, so if we look at the the sector comparison here, we can see that a PE ratio of the non-alcoholic beverages is thirty point four nine. So we can say, okay, compared to the industry. Coke and Pepsi are still a little bit undervalued, right? 28 versus 30, okay? And we can look at each other and say, oh, they're very close in comparison. So just from using this here, we can start to say, okay, well now maybe we wanna compare Pepsi to Monster Beverage or Pepsi to something else, right? We can start to compare these things and then we get a real uh, clean view of, of value, undervalued and overvalued, okay? but. There's a couple of things that we have to understand about PE ratios, okay? And I don't know if you guys notice this, but we have what we call a PE ratio and we have a forward PE, okay? And this is very, these, these are very important. When we hover over PE, PE here, we have what's called TTM, which is the trailing uh, 12 months, okay? So this is history, right? This is, this is back, going backwards 12 months to say, okay, this is the actual number of the, the price to earnings ratio. OK, so it's a multiple of that. Well, that's good in the in the respect that it's it's uh, it's real numbers. It's real data. OK, when we start to look at the forward P.E., the forward P.E. is forward looking. So so basically they have analysts looking at this and, and they, they look forward. and They say, OK, what do we expect from a, a, a price to earnings ratio going forward? Now, this can be um, overstated or understated. If it's overstated, you know, they may, may adjust it later. If it's understated, the PE ratio, it may be because they want to ensure that they get a beat on earnings going forward. Okay. So it can be, I don't want to say manipulated, it can be nudged one way or the other. So we have to take that into consideration. But it is good in the respect that when we look at a forward PE ratio, we can kind of see, okay, do they expect more or less earnings next year? So if we have a PE ratio the last 12 months of 2860, but we have a forward PE ratio that's lower. What that essentially means is they're expecting more earnings going forward for this particular company. So it's very important that we look at both metrics here, both the both the past and and you know reasonably into the future. But we also have to know those those two limit limit ah, limitations. Sorry. Okay. So remember, we're looking at forward guidance here for the forward PE ratio. It does have the, those limitations that I talked about, and we're looking at the real raw data uh, from before to tell us uh, you know what's important. So when we start to compare um, companies of a similar nature, we're probably going to focus on that trailing 12 months. Right? We're going to say, okay, which is better?
right? When we start to look at maybe some, some companies that, that have potential for growth, that's where we're going to look at that forward PE. And we can say, okay, well, they, they're expecting bigger earnings going forward, right? So, so that's a good thing. But we may want to take that with just a grain of salt, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, those numbers, like I said, they can be just nudged a little bit. They can, you know, overestimate them or underestimate them, but they're going to give you a ballpark figure. And so that's really where we can use the PE ratio, not only to compare each other, but kind of look at it as a growth scenario as well. And the other part of that is, is looking at the earnings per share, you know, watching that trend and then coming to look at the forward PE, PE ratio and comparing those two can give you an idea of, okay, what's on the horizon uh, for a company going forward. So, so we got the, we got the beauty of today. We can compare companies to companies companies, companies to the industry and companies to the, uh, the overall market. And we can also kind of look a little bit forward to say, okay, maybe this company is is less about quality cash flow and more about a growth component. We can use the PE ratio in both those manners. So it's a very versatile metric and it's one of the most uh, popular and consistent ones that I see people using in fundamental analysis. So it's definitely a place to start.